solitude was equally interesting. When looking at pictures of it, one might notice an object that seems out of place with an opulent estate and gardens, a natural gas derrick. Westinghouse decided to prospect for gas in his own backyard. When Marguerite heard about this, she was thrilled. It was recorded that she said something like, George, you travel so much, it would be nice to have you working at home for a while. In those days when they drilled a well, as they drilled the dirt and rock out, they'd strike a match to it, and if it flamed up, they said they had a vein of gas. So at 300 foot, they told him they had a small vein of gas. At 900 feet, they told him they had another small vein of gas. He told them to keep drilling. At 1,500 fit, feet, they hit a huge vein of gas. They immediately threw a match and set it afire. It was over 100 feet high, the flame, the, the roar could be heard for blocks. For a few days, it became the great event in Pittsburgh. People came from everywhere. They came by street railway, they came by horse and buggy, they walked throngs of people in the neighborhood to see this great fire. It lit the sky for miles around, and he was absolutely delighted, but his neighbors were not. Initially, neighbors like Henry Hines and Henry Clay Frick were a bit upset by this. However, George shared his natural gas with them and with friends around the block. Westinghouse would always prove to be an interesting neighbor, at one point having four gas wells at Solitude, an alternating current power plant, and a set of tracks to test street railway equipment. As Marguerite had predicted, George spent time at home with his new toys and his evenings at the well, designing new drilling tools and improvements in gas prospecting. In 1884, he went into the natural gas business. From all this gas that he had, he decided he was going to start a natural gas company. All his existing charters wouldn't allow him to start a utility. So he looked around and found an existing charter in the city of Philadelphia that would allow someone to start a utility. However, that charter was not being used at the time, so he acquired it. He brought that charter to Pittsburgh and started his natural gas company. He never, for whatever reason, changed the name on that charter, and ironically, the name of that company was the Philadelphia Company. So he had this very successful company in Pittsburgh named the Philadelphia Company. Later, a street railway company was added to the Philadelphia Company. When that company was broken up by the Federal Antitrust in 1951, it became Pittsburgh Railways, the largest streetcar company in, in the city at the time, and it also became Equitable Gas and Duquesne Light, both of those companies existing to this very day. Two years after he drilled his first well, Westinghouse had over 30 patents in the area of natural gas. He had seen in his, in his trips to England the use of what they had coal gas over there, not natural gas, but they were using uh, coal gas to, to run a lot of their industry. Uh, he saw it as a cleaner, more efficient fuel. Industries adapted to the um, natural gas right away. It was cheaper, first of all. A lot of steel companies went to it. And then uh, the engineer that he was, and what he had learned from compressed air and air brakes was where he learned how to transmit gas. Natural gas was dangerous in the early days. Lines frequently broke, and asphyxiation from gas leaks and explosions were common. Its usage was not even metered. Westinghouse worked feverishly to solve these problems and developed escape pipes, meters, and the automatic cutoff regulator. 